Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Ray, and I direct the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection here at Cleveland Marshall College of Law, and also created and direct the online Master of Legal Studies in Cybersecurity and Data Privacy uh, that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about in this recording. So I will briefly go over the program, um, the curriculum in the program, why we have it, and why it provides a fantastic grounding for a career in cybersecurity across a range of disciplines, uh, and then give you a little bit of information about applying and uh, tell you the deadlines. Since I'm just recording today, I won't do any Q&A, but please join us for our next webinar in March, uh, or feel free to reach out uh, via email, and I or one of my colleagues uh, will be happy to answer any questions. So this is what we like to call a 360 degree view of cybersecurity. Uh, we're a law school and the program is uniquely based in a law program. Uh, most cybersecurity master's programs sit inside of the engineering or computer science or information technology uh, departments. We incorporate aspects of that, but we are primarily law and policy focused. Uh, and that is because increasingly law really drives a lot of the issues, a lot of the requirements, uh, obviously intersects with the uh, technical side. Uh, but there are just more and more laws coming on the books, both on the security side and on the privacy side, and increasingly in cognate areas like artificial intelligence uh, that you'll learn about and learn to be able to implement uh, on a technical level. As I just mentioned, uh, the legal side of cybersecurity and data privacy continues to grow. Europe was one of the first. Uh, with the general data protection regulation in the privacy space. Uh, they also have a cybersecurity regulation and they just uh, finished um, passing uh, a, a regulation on artificial intelligence, which incorporates both security and privacy and adds other uh, issues. Domestically here in the US, uh, we have a number of regulators on the federal side, most prominently the Federal Trade Commission uh, on the health side, um, health and human services, um, and uh, on the financial services side, the Security and Exchange Commission. All each of these agencies uh, has for a long time had a set of regulations uh, that they are increasingly refining, adding new requirements. Uh, notably recently, the SEC has created a very stringent breach reporting requirement. Parallel to that, uh, each of the states has cybersecurity reporting requirements and most states uh, and a growing number of states have uh, increased in complex data privacy uh, regulations. And so the space just continues to grow and get more complex. You might think that these are legal issues that only counsel's office or outside counsel legal has to deal with. But in fact, because of the nature of these laws, they have to be implemented on the technical side. And so whether you're working on the technical or the legal compliance side of things, uh, you really need to understand how these laws work and be able to talk to one another. Uh, the technical folks need to be able to understand enough of the law to be able to work with legal to come up with solutions for compliance uh, and vice versa. Both on the technical and the legal side, because of both the nature of uh, cybersecurity and data privacy, the issues, the attacks continue to grow, uh, the legal requirements continue to get more complex. And so the job market uh, here is robust and no signs of slowing down anytime soon. So what will you learn in this program? Uh, it is a part-time program um, designed to take two courses a semester, uh, spring, summer, fall, uh, depending on when you start, uh, we have, as we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, start co cohorts that start in both spring and fall. Uh, we do not currently start uh, cohorts in the summer. Uh, but once you begin, if you stay on track, you'll complete in, uh, in five semesters. And um, each of our courses in the list down here is built to be primarily asynchronous with um, at least several synchronous uh, sessions where you'll get to know your uh, professor and get to know uh, your colleagues. As I mentioned before, 
we're in a law program. And so we have in the upper level, mostly uh, legal focused courses. You'll start out with Introduction to American Law and Cybersecurity One in most cases. Those are the two foundational courses for the legal and the technical side. Introduction to American Law is a course that I created and uh, often teach that gives you a thorough grounding generally in law focused on the issues you'll encounter as a cybersecurity professional. Cybersecurity One then is our first technical course. It is a little bit of a, of a jumping into the deep end for folks without a technical background. Uh, you'll learn the basics of cybersecurity from a technical perspective and play around with some open source tools, doing some lab um, there. The next foundational course uh, on the law side is legal writing. You'll encounter that relatively soon, but maybe not immediately in your second semester. There you'll go a little bit deeper into using uh, and to some extent creating legal materials, in particular focused on how to do uh, legal research. Cybersecurity 2 then is the second upper level technical course where you will uh, learn how to create policies to comply with a range of regulatory requirements that you would encounter from a large public university like CSU. Uh, and so it's it's developing policies, but policies that provide the technical control. So really translating those laws and regulations into, um, into policy on a technical basis. Uh, then in the upper level, the foundational law course is privacy law and management. That is a survey of all of the major laws and regulations focused on those uh, in the US, although we talk about Europe, GDPR. Uh, and uh, that is taught from an operational perspective by the current um, head, of the, the current cybersecurity strategic advisor for the state of Ohio, formerly the chief privacy officer for nationwide insurance, uh, one of the leaders in this field. Corporate compliance one and two are paired courses that pull the lens back to look at how cybersecurity and privacy fit into a general compliance program. Uh, this is where they sit. Uh, and it is the compliance office along with legal that you will work with or work in, depending on your career path. Uh, and then HIPAA and privacy uh, goes deep into the health uh, regulation on the federal side. Uh, this is because HIPAA still is uh, one of the most complex um, regulatory frameworks, both at the state and federal level. It maps to NIST. Uh, and so understanding how HIPAA works really gives you a thorough grounding to deal with any complex um, regulation in this area, law and regulation in this area. Uh, and also almost every entity um, it has some dimension uh, where they have to deal with HIPAA. So understanding HIPAA is really important uh, in this field. Uh, then cyber law, uh, which is taught by um, another of our distinguished adjuncts. He is a professor at the United States Air Force Academy, Jeff Biller. Uh, he goes into the criminal law and national security aspects of cybersecurity. And then finally, our last technical course, the technical capstone. Uh, here you'll do a series of labs on the cyber range. And uh, this maps to the Certified Ethical Hacker certification. Speaking of certifications, one of the things I want to emphasize is, as you can see from this curriculum, uh, we really are giving you that that broad range of understanding focused on the legal and policy issues. We are giving you a technical ground that you do not have to have a technical background coming into this program. If you do, we're happy to talk with you about some possible alternatives to cybersecurity one or two. Um, but even if you don't, those courses will give you that, that baseline understanding. Now, if you are looking to pivot from a non-technical background into a technical career, then you'll have to do more. Um, you'll have to take some certifications, um, or you might consider looking at like a boot camp style program. Uh, but even if you do that, in addition to this, our program will give you a, a knowledge base skill set that will last throughout your career. If you were already in cybersecurity uh, or have an IT technical background, uh, then this is a great way uh, to demonstrate uh, that you are looking to move up into the next level, either into a security team or to advance up into um, um, into senior uh, leadership within a security team. Conversely, if you're looking to come in on the compliance side or you're already working in compliance, then obviously this will give you that technical understanding in addition to deepening uh, and broadening your understanding of the legal environment. So we encourage all of our students, whether they're looking to do compliance legal or whether they're looking to do 
uh, a technical career to also pursue some of the certifications that the industry values on the privacy side, uh, private privacy law and management tracks to um, the uh, the International Association of Privacy Professionals uh, CIPP US certification, which is the gold standard certification for privacy US, uh, and a little bit for the CIPP EU, and we encourage students to take those exams. Uh, and then on the technical side, there are a range of certifications that we will talk about and you'll learn about that we encourage students to pursue, especially if you're looking uh, for an entry level job in this uh, in this field. Okay, and so this slide just nicely summarizes uh, all of those courses add up to giving you this again 360 degree understanding of both the legal uh, and then a, a thorough grounding in the technical side. Uh, this includes understanding the major data security, privacy, legal, regulatory frameworks, as well as some of the industry frameworks. Talk about NIST uh, and some of the others, and then how to uh, use that knowledge base to understand, apply, implement, uh, and to some and to some extent, assess, assess your organization uh, for compliance with these various um, laws and regulations. Importantly, I forgot to mention on the curriculum side, we are always uh, developing new courses. And as a student in this program, you are a master student in uh, the uh, at CSU and within the law program. So you are welcome to take other courses that both we offer uh, and that, that our um, information sciences program, and if you have the technical depth, the computer science program offers. So we're always happy to work with you to consider other electives. Not all of those electives, in fact, most of them will not will not be built in this 100% asynchronous format, but uh, CSU Law uh, recently created an online uh, JD program. And so we increasingly are, are offering more and more asynchronous courses, both in this program and in uh, that program. Okay, so if you're interested in uh, pursuing this degree, uh, pay attention, you got some time here. We're early in the process. We just uh, started our spring semester. And as I mentioned, we do not have a summer cohort start. Next start is for fall. Application deadline is August 2nd. Uh, makes sense to try to get your stuff in well ahead of time. It's a relatively straightforward application, but there are a few pieces we need. Um, and the start date is September 3rd. So looking ahead, you've got some time, but uh, to the extent you get in early, we'll make sure you've got a spot uh, and also happy to talk with you uh, if you have any questions, concerns, need to know more about what we're looking for. In essence, uh, if you have a, a 3.0 in your undergraduate, um, pretty much um, that's the qualification we're looking for. If you don't have that, uh, but you've got experience, then let us know that or reach out. Uh, and I will be happy to talk to you uh, and talk through kind of your experience so we understand, make sure you're right fit for the program. If you're not sure whether this program is right for you, depending on what your career goals are, also feel free to reach out. And I'm happy to talk through what we offer as opposed to other options out there and how you might either do a combination or uh, whether this is the right program for you. And then, as I mentioned, if you have a technical background or for that matter, if you're a lawyer uh, with a JD, let me know, reach out and we will work with you to um, find, a, to, to get you into the program. And then as you progress in the program, uh, give you alternatives to some of those baseline courses. If you have a JD in particular, uh, intro to American Law and Legal Writing, and if you are a cybersecurity, um, if you've got cybersecurity uh, training, you're in a technical role, you might not need cybersecurity one or two. Okay, with that, uh, feel free to reach out on that email. Um, uh, actually, reach out via the email, Julie DiBiase, who's featured here, uh, is usually the point person, but she's on maternity leave until May. So I will respond directly uh, via that email. Uh, and um, uh, my phone number is 216-687-2528, uh, not 2328-2528. So uh, feel free to reach out and get emails, probably the most reliable. Uh, but also happy to return a call if you call me at 687-2528. With that, I will wrap things up and look forward to hearing from folks.